Good morning. Welcome to worship at Albany First United Methodist Church. My name is Terry, and with the help of Kirk, I will lead us in worship today as Pastor Alyssa is leading worship in Sweet Home. Welcome to all of you who have joined us in person and all those worshiping online. Happy Palm Sunday. You're invited to take a palm today, and if you would like to, wave it as we sing songs of praise. If you missed your palm on the way in, just hold your hand up and one of the ushers will bring one to you. Today we continue our Wandering Hearts series, Figuring Out Our Faith with Peter. The theme is Songs of Loudest Praise. Our message will be shared by our music director, Eric McCurdy, who we're happy to welcome back. And we're grateful to have Dane to accompany our music today as Eric continues to heal. At this time, I invite you to center yourself for a time of worship as we hear our prelude from Dane. Good morning. Please share with me in the call to worship. Sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna. Sing songs that are unashamed. Hosanna. Sing songs that are without being afraid. Hosanna. Let us worship the one worthy to be praised and join me in the affirmation of faith. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who rode through the streets in Jerusalem on a donkey. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who challenged Rome's oppressive hour with peaceful process. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who was surrounded by crowds of dreamers and believers. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, even so today, we will sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please turn to your neighbor and share signs of Christ's peace. Listen for Dane to lead us into our opening hymn.
Our scripture reading today is from the book of John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that things had been written of him and had been done by him. I probably shouldn't be here, <laughs> but I came anyway. For those of you who uh, have not heard, the reason why I've joined the Cane Club, which is an upgrade from the walker I was using a week ago, by the way, so Hosanna, 
Uh, I did have a little incident with a ladder that decided to race me to the ground. The ladder won, but only slightly. I was a very close second. Broke some bones and things over here. Not requiring surgery, just time and patience, neither of which I'm fond of. So, uh, but I'm learning to be patient and learning to be uh, not moving, learning to be stationary and, and all kinds of things. So, but all restrictions were lifted. I get to go up and down stairs now, and they didn't say don't go to church and give a sermon or anything, so I'm assuming that that's covered under the all restrictions lifted, and since it was already written, I figured I better come and do it anyway. So I'm very happy to be on my feet, not getting pneumonia or blood clots, and healing a little bit every day, and it's wonderful to be back standing here in your presence. Thank you all very much for the cards that you sent. I really, really appreciated those, and Jill and I traded several emails back and forth that I appreciated very much, and Tom and Tam have texted me every once in a while to make sure I'm still alive, and I am, so yes. And it's Palm Sunday. I couldn't, couldn't miss Palm Sunday. It's the very threshold of Holy Week, and I love Palm Sunday because today we all embark on a journey through one of the profoundest mysteries of our faith. Sorrow and joy, death and resurrection. Throughout Lent, we have walked beside Peter, witnessing his transformation from a simple fisherman to a foundational figure in the early church. Today, as Terry taught us, we focus on John chapter 12, verses 12 through 16, where Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem sets the stage for our reflections on anticipation, transformation, and the nature of true kingship. Peter's path to discipleship, fraught though it was with divine encounters and human missteps, exemplifies the transformative power of our faith. From his miraculous catch of fish to his attempt to walk on water, each experience with Jesus deepened Peter's understanding of his own faith and the Messiah's mission. Peter's journey, marked by moments of profound faith and palpable fear, mirrors our own spiritual pathways, reminding us of the dynamic nature of discipleship. On that very first Palm Sunday, Jerusalem was a city alive with anticipation. It starts its streets teeming with pilgrims gathered for the Passover feast. The air was thick with the scent of dust mixed with the aroma of crowded humanity and sacrificial offerings. Jerusalem's streets, more dust and stone than paved thoroughfares, echoed with the footsteps of centuries of seekers. In this bustling scene, Jesus entered, riding on a donkey, fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah and challenging contemporary expectations of messianic deliverance. This deliberate act of humble kingship, a stark contrast to the Roman spectacle of power, underscored the kingdom of God's foundational principles of peace and servitude. The crowd's response, laying down palm branches and their cloaks in Jesus' path, was a gesture laden with historical and prophetic significance. It was an act of honor for one they hoped would usher in a new era of liberation. The shouts of Hosanna, a plea for salvation, were charged with both spiritual yearning and political hope a dual cry for divine rescue and earthly liberation from Roman oppression. Maybe you don't consider yourself to be much of a singer and wonder why do we need to sing in the first place? But the tradition of musical worship is as ancient as humanity itself. Tracing back to the earliest civilizations where song was intertwined with communal and religious life. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, music, and specifically singing, occupies a central place in worship 
and communal expression. This tradition is rooted in the Psalms, the ancient hymn book of the Israelites, which contains explicit calls to worship God through song. Psalm 96 says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. The act of singing transcends mere vocalization. It's a profound expression of faith and a communal affirmation of belief and devotion. The origins of singing as a form of worship can be traced back to the belief in the power of words and music to connect the human spirit with the divine. In ancient Israel, singing was an integral part of temple worship, a means of recounting the acts of God, celebrating his faithfulness and invoking his presence. The Levites, designated as temple musicians, underscored the importance of music in worship, leading the congregation in songs of loudest praise and thanksgiving. This rich tradition of musical worship finds a poignant expression on Palm Sunday. The crowds that gathered to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem were participating in an act of worship as ancient as their faith. Their cries of Hosanna were not merely shouts of acclaim, but were deeply rooted in the practice of singing praises to God for deliverance and salvation. Hosanna itself, a word derived from Hebrew meaning save please, is a direct appeal to God for salvation, a theme recurrent throughout the Psalms. The act of singing Hosanna on Palm Sunday was a dynamic expression of the people's hopes and expectations. It was a declaration of Jesus as the Messiah, the one who comes in the name of the Lord to bring salvation, as the choir just sang a few minutes ago. This public act of singing was both a fulfillment of scriptural prophecy and a subversive act of political and religious defiance. By choosing to sing praises to Jesus, the crowd was asserting his authority over any earthly power, acknowledging Jesus as the true king. Moreover, the use of song on Palm Sunday reflects the communal nature of worship. Just as the Israelites sang together to celebrate God's deliverance and to recount his deeds, so too did the crowd on Palm Sunday unite their voices in a communal act of worship and proclamation. This unity in song is a powerful testament to the collective expression of faith and the shared anticipation of redemption. This is why we sing in the Christian tradition congregational hymns each and every Sunday to together collectively worship and call upon Jesus as our Lord and King and invoke his presence with us here in this sanctuary. In the context of Palm Sunday, the songs of loudest praise carry a message that is as revolutionary as it is ancient. They remind us of the enduring power of communal worship through music to express our deepest hopes to challenge the prevailing narratives of power and to proclaim our allegiance to a kingdom defined by love, justice, and peace. Now, back to the streets of Jerusalem. In this vibrant tableau of Palm Sunday, we find a moment inviting introspection. Where do you think Peter was standing? Do you picture him at the front of the crowd, making sure to be seen and making sure his voice was heard? Or do you imagine him as the more shy, retiring type, standing behind the crowd, still very supportive, but quietly taking it all in? And for that matter, where do you see yourself standing in this narrative? Are you at the front of the crowd cheering loudly? Or maybe you're more inclined to stand behind the crowd, feeling more of a quiet celebration in your heart. Whatever your answer may be, our individual journeys to faith, just like Peter's, shaped by unique experiences of joy, sorrow, and revelation, inform our stance in relation to Christ. This diversity of spiritual paths is not a divergence, but a reflection of the body of Christ in its multifaceted beauty. Our standing with Christ today is influenced by our life stories, much like how Peter's own experiences with Jesus defined his discipleship. It's important to recognize that there is no singular correct place to stand. 
The essence lies in the act of standing itself, being present, being counted. This Palm Sunday, let us embrace the richness of our varied journeys, understanding that our unique perspectives and experiences enrich our collective faith journey together. So as we reflect on our positions in the crowd, we find that discipleship is a call to action informed by personal encounter and communal identity. Our diversity, grounded in our shared faith, strengthens our communal witness, enabling us to offer a mosaic of testimonies to the world. In this diversity, we find unity bound together by our common allegiance to Christ and our shared journey toward the cross and beyond to resurrection. So now as we step into Holy Week, carrying with us the vivid images of Palm Sunday, let us do so with a renewed sense of purpose and identity. May the humility of Jesus, the courage of the crowd, and the personal residence of Peter's journey inspire us to live out our faith boldly and authentically. Together, may we navigate the complexities of this holy season, drawing closer to the heart of God and to one another in our shared journey of faith. And as we celebrate and honor Holy Week, I also would like to invite you as you pass through the narthex this afternoon or on Good Friday or on Easter Sunday, there's a beautiful art gallery display of six paintings that depict Holy Week that are quite moving and are a gift, were painted as a gift to this congregation. And so I hope you'll take a moment to really take those in. Now, would you please join me in prayer? Lord of all beginnings and endings, as we enter this Holy Week, guide our steps in our hearts. Help us to find our place in your story to stand with Jesus and to walk the path of the cross with faith, hope, and love. In the diversity of our experiences, please unite us in your purpose, leading us into the joy of your resurrection. Amen. And now you're going to sing something, but I have no idea what. But it's about to appear on the screen, isn't it? Yep, there it is. Oh. <laughs>
we've come to our time to share prayers and requests. If you have a prayer request that you haven't sent forward, if you just hold your hand up, one of the ushers will bring it up to me. Um, my two prayer, not requests, but today are that I'm very happy to have Dane here to help us with the music and that our choir director is healing well and will be back with us soon. Um, I, have, I do have one request um, and it's for flowers for the cross of flowers on Easter Sunday. If you have flowers and you can bring them in, um, we need them at least 30 minutes before the service on Sunday. Are there any other prayers or requests? I can't really see you, so you'll have to stand up or something. Let us pray. Holy God, we want to run into the streets and sing your praise. We want to be bold and unashamed of this good news gospel. However, too often we find ourselves standing against the wall too often we stay quiet. Too often we let others carry the song. Forgive us for the moments when we could lead the parade, but instead find ourselves standing on the sidelines. Show us which songs are ours to sing. Show us which parades are ours to lead. And then give us the courage and conviction to do both. With hope and honesty, we pray and pray that the prayer your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those to trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you wish and join in the hymn, Jesus, Thine All-Victorious Love, found in the hymnal on page 422. many opportunities this week during Holy Week to meet and be together in prayer. Um, our worship on Palm Sunday 
will begin Holy Week. That's today. We invite you to share in the Wandering Heart devotions this week and to join the South Sandy Am Circuit for Holy Week worship. On Maundy Thursday, service will be at 11 a.m. in Sweet Home United Methodist Church and at 7 p.m. in Lebanon United Methodist Church. On Good Friday, services will be at 11 a.m. Sweet Home United Methodist Church and 7 p.m. Albany First United Methodist Church. On Easter, worship is a regular Sunday schedule. 9.30 a.m. at Albany First United Methodist Church, 11 a.m. at Sweet Home United Methodist Church, and it will be led by Pastor Barbara Nixon, and at 11.15 a.m. at Lebanon First United Methodist Church. You're welcome to attend any and all of the services. Our closing blessing. Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, Take heart, it is I. Be not afraid. You are called, you are blessed. In both your ups and downs, you always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go trusting the good news. Amen.